In this tutorial, we're going to present the watchpoint setting capabilities of UDB. While breakpoints are location-centric, being associated with instruction addresses, watchpoints are data-centric, being associated with expressions. We use watchpoint to stop execution whenever the value of an expression is changed or read, without having to predict a particular place inside our code where this may happen. UDB offers three commands for setting watchpoints. The primary command is watch. Watchpoints created through the watch command are also known as write watchpoints, since they activate when the expression they are associated with changes. The second command is rwatch, and this helps setting read watchpoints, which activate when the expression is read. Finally, the awatch command sets read-write watchpoints that activate when the expression is read or written. Now let's focus on write watchpoints, which are the ones usually used when debugging. The main syntax for setting such a watchpoint is watch, followed by one argument, the expression. This can range from a single variable to a complicated expression involving multiple variables combined by operators. In addition, Watch accepts two optional arguments. When using the minus "-l", or minus "-location", argument, the single variable specified in the expression will be tracked outside the local scope. In such cases, the debugger evaluates the expression, takes the address of the result, and watches the memory at that address. The second option is the thread ID. If the command includes a thread ID, the debugger breaks only when the thread identified by thread ID changes the expression value. If other threads change the expression's value, the watchpoint will not activate. We shall now exemplify the setting of watchpoints through the watch command by using a simple application that implements a number of sorting algorithms. Starting a debugging session on this binary, we must begin running the debuggy before being allowed to set watchpoints. This is different from how breakpoints work, as these can be set before the debuggy is started. It is understandable, however, that until a debuggy process is created, there is no memory allocated, hence no expression can be evaluated or tracked. Let's set a temporary breakpoint on the main function and start the debuggy so that we can also look at its source code. In the main function, an integer array called r is used throughout the program to test three sort functions, bubble sort, insertion sort, and selection sort. Suppose now that we would want to track the changes done to the third element of the r array inside the bubble sort function. We need first to continue the execution until we are inside the bubble sort function. Now, the R variable is in our current context, hence we can set a watchpoint on its third element. If we resume execution, we will see that the watchpoint is being hit multiple times. As soon as we left the context of the bubble sort function, the watchpoint was deleted as the expression could no longer be evaluated. We can confirm that the watchpoint has been deleted by running the info watchpoints command. This shows us all the relevant information regarding the watchpoints that are set in the current debugging session. As we can see, the list of watchpoints is empty, confirming that watchpoint 3 has indeed been deleted. If we would like to track the changes on a single variable throughout the whole program, we would need to use the minus "-l", option. Let's restart the debuggy and stop execution inside the bubble sort function. Now, we can set a watchpoint on the memory address of R of 2. If we resume execution, 
we will see that not only is the watch point being hit on all the changes to the RF2 variable throughout the entire program, but it has also remained defined when debugging execution stopped. In order to constrain a watch point to activate only when the expression is changed by a specific thread, we must use the thread thread ID syntax. To demonstrate it, we are going to use a simple thread consumer producer program. Here, two threads are making changes to a globally defined list. One thread is running the feeder function, which adds items to the list, whereas the other thread is running the iter function, which removes items from the head of the list. The threads are allowed to run for 10 seconds, after which the application is terminated. Suppose that we would like to track the changes done to the list variable, but only if made for the iter function. To do this, we will use the watch command, followed by the thread ID syntax. As previously shown, before we are able to set a watch point, we need to set a breakpoint where the data that we want to track is defined, then run the debuggy up until that point. In our case, we are interested in the changes done for the iter function. Hence, we will set a temporary breakpoint on the line of code where the thread running the iter function is created. Now, after we execute this line, we can find out the thread ID by running the info threads command. Knowing that the thread running the iter function has ID too, we can set a watchpoint for tracking the list variable as changed by the iter function. If we resume execution, we can now see that the watchpoint activates only when the iter function changes the list variable. The above output shows that the watchpoint has been triggered only by changes to lists done through thread 2. The syntax for rwatch and awatch is identical to that of watch. We will now present a brief example of using a read-write watch point. Let's see awatch in action by returning to the sorting demo application. Here, we will set a read-write watch point on the temp variable inside the swap function. Before doing this, Let's remember that we first have to start the debuggy and have the execution reach the context of our variable of interest. Now we can set the watch point using the awatch command. Resuming execution, we can track the temp variable being first written and then read until we leave the swap function. As expected, after leaving the swap function, the debugger has deleted the watch point since the temp variable is no longer in scope. This tutorial has presented the way in which watch points can be set in UDB. Watch points stop the execution of a debuggy whenever an expression with which they are associated changes or is read. UDB offers three commands for setting watch points. Depending on the nature of the watch point, these are watch, for write watch points, R watch, for read watch points, and A watch, for read write watch points. For more information, visit andu.io forward slash UDB.